Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Tops Buying Stuff. After the visual non-stimulus in my last video, which was my inventory update, so I was just basically reading figures at you, I thought we'd like make up for it in this video with this very 80s inspired blue eye, pink lip, pink blush, shoulders look. So yeah. Uh, it's different for me um, but yeah I figured a slightly over the top makeup look was probably quite appropriate for today's video because today we are doing my 2020 makeup rehab wrap up so revisiting the makeup rehab goals and behaviours that I had decided to implement in 2020 and um, you know, seeing if I was successful or not and how I feel that they've worked. So I had four points to my makeup rehab plans for 2020. And the first one of those was my year-long no buy. So that was wider than just makeup rehab. That was all categories. So clothing, homewares, obviously if you want the full rundown, you can go back and watch my intro video um, to talk about like any exceptions. So I think I'd um, said like technology, essentials, well, there was a couple of exceptions, but basically no buying anything unless it was a like direct replacement for something that I was completely out of. Um, and I was successful in that. Now, I found it quite easy because I'm quite an all or nothing person. And I think I found it easier to just say, right, I can't buy anything than I would have if I tried to do a moderation project to start with. But by the end, I was really struggling. Like, I would say the first through to, like, August, maybe, sailed through, no issues. And by the end, it started to really get to me. I obviously can't know. I can only theorise on why that was. Part of me is a bit like, obviously, we were in the middle of a global pandemic um, and it started in March and I feel like I went through this journey of being like, being in a pandemic, particularly at the start, just made buying anything feel so frivolous and shallow and just so not part of the bigger picture. Um, because the thing is, when you're buying in a pandemic, even if the shops are shut, if you're buying online, People still have to go in, they have to package up those orders and um, you know that, that still people have to deliver those orders. It's still encouraging contact and people to be in work and whatever. So my sort of initial reaction to that was very much like, oh my god, how could anyone even think about shopping in the middle of this? And even when shops reopened, we're back in lockdown now to give context to this, even when shops reopened at first. I still wasn't bothered about it but as the year went on I started to struggle by the end and I don't know if that is because Christmas collections just generally really appealed to me in terms of specifically beauty shopping but I was struggling with the no buy in general by the end because I wanted things and I don't know if part of that was because a I did my Christmas shopping for other people so I was obviously I was allowed to buy gifts that was one of the exceptions as well and um, so I don't know if it was to do with the fact that because I was doing my Christmas shopping I was suddenly in those habits and behaviours again where I was in shops where I was looking for things to buy not for myself but still looking for things to buy still you know exercising that sort of shopping that muscle that hadn't been used um, you know for the best part of a year sort of reawakened it and I don't know if that just is because I can't really do moderation so I'm either doing something or I'm not and I don't know if that was just what that was about was that I was doing my Christmas shopping therefore I don't know if my brain just went well we should be shopping again because we've started shopping Um that didn't happen when I was so one of my other exceptions was on holiday I could shop and obviously 2020 I did not get on most of my holidays. I got one break away in 2020 which was to Edinburgh for a couple of nights and that was obviously when restrictions were lifted and things like that and I didn't even feel when I came back from Edinburgh having bought things in Edinburgh that that kind of had pushed me off to shop but I don't know if it was because that again I've talked about this before 
but I tend to shop really well on holiday but I don't know if part of that is because I'm in this different environment and it means that the shopping behaviours are associated with that environment rather than my home environment so I don't know if that's maybe why that didn't kick anything off if it is to do with the fact I was shopping for other people kicking off just a desire to keep shopping and um, you know doing that thing where I was buying for other people and then finding stopping really difficult even in terms of like buying things for other people I kind of started having urges to be like oh, I'll just get my grand that lipstick and I'll just get my grandpa this aftershave and I'll just add in this box of chocolates and I'll just do a Fortnum's order for you know a nice like hamper or whatever and and it was a bit like you've bought your presents like stop it so it wasn't even just for me that I was wanting to keep shopping it was kind of like over and beyond buying for other people as well so that might have been part of it but I also don't know if it was just partly that by the end of 2020 because when we went into lockdown in March I think the first lockdown was I think six weeks or something they said initially and then it would be reviewed was it I feel like three months sounds significant but I don't think they said three months to start with I think it was a matter of weeks to start with and then it was being reviewed but three months came and went basically and in Scotland it was into July before things started lifting and then we did lift and then we as we got to the end of the year we knew we were hurtling back towards another proper lockdown so we had a sort of mini lockdown um sort of in between the time when I'd after I'd started my Christmas shopping it was like the end of November first week in December we had like a three week lockdown um in the Glasgow area and then it reopened again to get through to Christmas and then from Boxing Day we went into um the the full lockdown nationally that we are in now and I don't know if part of that was in terms of how my head was by the end of the year I don't know if part of me was wanting to shop to buy things because it was almost it was almost like a way of reassuring myself that there would be times again in the future where I could wear this dress or I could wear these shoes or wh whatever it was it was like this sort of reassurance to myself that things will become normal and there will be a need for these items that I want does that make sense and of course the thing is even when things hopefully do you know we get the vaccine things do go back to normal I have a wardrobe full of clothes and obviously a huge makeup stash everything I was wanting to buy it wasn't like I didn't own something that would be suitable I still wanted that rush of something new but I do think it was it was maybe a combination of having started shopping for other people whilst f knowing like we could feel it like getting tighter you could see the numbers going up like you knew something was going to happen um, and obviously as I say with the first lockdown we went into it and there wasn't an end date in sight but it just kept getting extended and again this one I think was initially for whenever it was for um, and then it was going to be the end of January and now it's into mid-February and it'll be reviewed at the start of February kind of thing and I don't know how many times this one will be extended and I don't know if because my brain was like oh this happened before like you know let's buy th I don't know maybe it was like let's buy things so that we can be surrounded by nice things for being locked down again I don't know I can only theorise um, but I think maybe all of those things maybe had an impact on why towards the end of the year it got really difficult because the thing is with last year and this obviously then links to what I'm going to talk about in the rest of this video because we are only on point one I because we were in lockdown I didn't use my things this year as much as I would in a normal year so I'm, I'm somebody who has too much stuff fundamentally across all categories but even the things I would normally we're through in a year you know in terms of obviously I did my makeup inventory last week so like primers foundations and um, and just clothing that I might have worn through in a normal year like I would probably have needed to replace my gym stuff but the gyms were closed and I definitely went out walking but like 
let's not pretend that replaces a body pump class. Just clothes that I would have gotten more wear out of last year, I didn't because I ended up wearing you know my pajamas or leggings or just a lot more casual clothing um, as I think most people did. So basically even the stuff I would normally expel from my life in a year through usage I didn't last year. So although it got to the end of the year and I was starting to want stuff it's not like I'd done a full no buy and had gone through the stuff at the rate that I would usually go through and was like feeling like I was sitting in an empty god I would I would love to be able to say I felt like I was sitting in an empty room like that's uh, that yeah that's not gonna happen until I move house and before I move my stuff into my house it's not that like I'm still surrounded by stuff I'm still when I'm standing talking to you guys on camera about it I'm still overwhelmed by my stuff like I logically know that I have too much and I still have too much even after a no buy year and after like really stopping that flow in of items and obviously I I say obviously but if you're not new around here you know um although last year was my first like no buy year for all categories it was not my first no buy year for beauty. I went on a first no buy year for beauty in 2018 and that has lasted since 2018 through to, to now basically. So I have done three years of a beauty no buy and still not like whittled my stuff down. I mean I had a huge problem now. That's the point in this. I've been very honest about that. So yeah like it, it's a massive improvement in where it was but it's not like I'm sitting in an empty room being like oh I'm like a minimalist with six things around me like that's that's not where I'm at so that wasn't driving a desire for things it was you know it was that sort of illogical just desire to own things the only kind of good thing I can say about it and this is why I think it was maybe linked to that idea of there will be times to wear these things and to use these things again in the future even though for example like this Christmas there was not the usual amount of socialising or nights out or I say usual I mean there was like no socialising um you know but it, it was maybe that thing of there will be things in the future because one of the things that is good is that when I was in the real grips of my problematic spending the high and the enjoyment in buying things for me was the exact moment when I handed over my cash or card and the shop assistant handed me the item in the bag and it became mine and then as soon as that had kind of and I mean I'm talking like I would get that high standing in Space NK or Boots or whatever and by the time I'd be on the train home it would have gone and I'd be like on my phone on the train home looking for something else to buy because it was that checkout moment that really thrilled me whereas I feel like now I buy things and I'm more like oh I'm gonna wear this like this week like even so I, I didn't buy this I got this for Christmas um but I asked for it I picked it but when I like first put it on like because it's got the shoulders I was immediately like Oh, I'm gonna like wear this and I'm gonna put my hair up so you can really see not that you can really because all you can see are the shoulders but it's a very sort of structured blazer dress with big shoulders and um, so immediately I was like oh I'm gonna put that on with like my hair up so you can really see the structure of the dress and I was like it's got this sort of chartreuse colour through it so I might do it with like a really sort of muted lip and maybe like a sort of greeny yellowy eye and it's got the blue in it so I might try it with like the sort of look I've done today with this sort of electric 80s look and you know and I've, I've done that whereas before once I had attained it the joy from it was gone the joy was not in using the item the joy was in buying the item and half the time I got home and would like shove the item in the bag into my wardrobe or into a cupboard or whatever and literally forget about it like I'd forget I'd bought it because it was not about what I was buying it was about the buying itself Whereas I feel like now, although there are things that I've coveted and like I've said as well, but in terms of Christmas, like as soon as I was asked what I wanted for Christmas, like I could start listing off loads of things that I wanted. And um, 
you know, that desire for things definitely is still there, but it is different in that the desire is, I want to use this to do that, not I want to own this to own it and for it to sit in a cupboard but for me to be able to at least say that I own it like that's some kind of weird achievement. That's kind of my wrap up on my no buy. Let's get moving on to section two. To be fair like none of the other sections are is about feelings or anything if they're more number based so the rest of the sections shouldn't take as long as that did. Section number two my or my second goal was to hit reverse rouge four times. Reverse rouge is where you use up a thousand dollars worth of product so in 2018 I used up $4,035.47 so that was my first year of my beauty no buy. In 2019 I used up $3,816.93 worth of beauty products and I didn't track quantities the first year but last year I used up 2000, 2017. Last year I used up 217 products. As I've already said because of the pandemic I ended up not wearing makeup, not going through things at the rate that I normally would go through them at. So in 2020 I did use less. Um, I used up 187 items so actually quantity wise I only used up 30 less products but that was $256 of makeup that I used up, $1849.44 of skincare and $262.33 worth of hair care which in total brings me to $2367.77 worth of beauty stuff used up in a year. Was aiming for $4000, got like under $2500. The only good thing that I can kind of say is that obviously the average value of item that I've used this year is lower than last year because 30 extra products would not have equated to like $1,400. So 30 more products in terms of if I had used the same amount quantity wise as I did last year would not have brought me to the same value. So I think it looks like this year I've used more budget things. I'm not going to make this about what I want to do next year because I'm obviously going to introduce I'm seeing next year like I'm filming this in 2021 like this year it's it's all getting very confusing I'm not going to talk about what I'm going to do in 2021 in this video but I am going to be continuing um with a new project to replace my no buy and new makeup rehab plans as well I will set a reverse rouge goal for next year this year's Serious underperformance will inform that. Point number three is beauty declutters. I, in total this year, I didn't set any goals for decluttering, but I did track it. And this year I decluttered 77 makeup items and one skincare item. And it was $95 worth of skincare. It was a serum that just really didn't agree with me. And makeup wise, I decluttered $1,519.90 worth of makeup. So pleased with that. Again, and I feel like this would be, if if the pandemic hadn't happened this would be such a different video but if you watched my makeup rehab intro for 2020 I had you can kind of see up there makeup up on my drawers and uh, my dressing table and whatever and what I was doing is once I had used things I was putting them into a box and then that box would be up for consideration for decluttering. The plan was then that once I decided to save an item it would go into a separate box so that basically all the makeup that was still out was things that I hadn't yet used. What the plan was then that at the end of the year if there was any makeup left out that I hadn't got to within a year I had to look at how many I had decluttered and knowing that what I had saved plus the number I had decluttered was the amount of that item that I could use in a year so say I had used let's make it really easy, um, 70 lipsticks, decluttered 20 of them and had 50 in the box, then say I had 25 left, I could save 20 of those 25 because I knew I could use another 20 within a year in addition to what I'd kept because I decluttered 20, I'd used and decluttered 20 in theory in this example. So I would need to pick five of the remaining ones that I hadn't got around to to declutter because I don't want to have a makeup collection that is more makeup than I can use in a year in terms of things expiring. It's just 
I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous statement to say that I already have more makeup than I can use in a year, but other than just the sheer ridiculousness of that, that is the expiry of that. If I'm keeping things around as they are going off on me to only use them once a year, like that's so silly. But because I used less makeup last year than I usually would, I don't feel like I can actually go through with that part of it because it's it just wasn't a normal year. I don't feel that the amount of makeup I went through is actually a reflection in how much makeup I can go through in a year if I was wearing it properly the way that I normally would. I've kind of ditched that part, basically is what we're saying. I went back and forth and back and forth on it and then basically I have moved all my stuff back into its kind of normal storage so that I can take my beauty inventory for 2021. So that's now kind of put complete paid to it because I have no record of how much I used or not used now so even though I still, I probably shouldn't have because I'm still a bit like oh, I should still do more of a declutter I think but we've done it now so again 2021 there will be more makeup rehab behaviours that are informed by this year so we will still be trying to whittle things down basically and to make up for the things that have been fails this year. The fourth goal that I'd set myself and the third thing I've failed on, basically the only thing that I have actually managed, that's so depressing, um, the only thing I've actually managed basically is the no buy itself. My fourth goal was to reduce my stash by $3,000 and that was to reduce it in terms of if I was using up things and replacing them they weren't really counting towards actually reducing the overall numbers, although they counted towards the reverse rouge, it wasn't actually becoming a zero in the inventory because something else was going in in its place. So it was kind of putting the impact that things that I was using and replacing aside and saying that I wanted to use an excess of 3,000 things to reduce the actual totals by. I didn't quite do it, but actually not too far off, so I'm quite pleased with this one. So my opening beauty stash for hair care, skin care and makeup at the start of 2020 was worth $29,361.45. My closing total is $26,804.68 and that means the reduction there is $2,556.77. I'm quite pleased with that because it's although it's not $3,000 it's two and a half thousand. It's half a thousand off. And I feel like next year I will use more naturally but I'll also continue with the decluttering so if I was as successful next year with my decluttering and I go through things at the rate I would more normally go through them in a more normal year which obviously I can't predict. If we learned anything in 2020 it's that we can't predict what is going to happen so I don't know what's going to happen because we're starting 2021 in a lockdown but there is a vaccine in the horizon and you know hopefully this year things are going to go back to sort of semi-normality and you know and I'm back to work physically in the office which is a whole other chat but that aside like even in work I've been putting on not exciting makeup but like just sort of a basic work face pretty much every day that I've been in work actually the signs are there that at the moment in terms of how I'm feeling there's a desire to use things again that during the first lockdown there just wasn't I just wasn't interested I was just so overwhelmed I think by a lockdown but also and I, I haven't spoken about this but the, the whole Black Lives Matter movement last year and just I haven't spoken about it because I don't know how to speak about it just how overwhelming it was to just see the state of the world that we live in um, and I don't know again if the fact Trump is now no longer president that makes me very happy. Not that I think Joe Biden is perfect and you know he must be held to account and he must be made to deliver on things but I'm so happy that Trump is gone. I think that's going to make a huge difference. I'd like Boris Johnson to be gone from the UK but don't know they seem to keep voting him in so don't know when that's going to happen um but I feel like at least having Donald Trump out of office 
just in terms of the state of the world it feels like one less thing that's sort of hanging around my neck in a way I don't know if that's had an impact as well on the fact I feel a bit more motivated to sort of do things at the moment or if it's just purely that it's a new year because I am somebody who like like I don't like new year in terms of nights out for new year but I do really like fresh starts I like Mondays I like the start of new months, I like new years, I like sort of very clear cut fresh starts. It is what it is. So I mean it's just theorising on why I feel the way that I do and why I felt the way that I did. I, I can't know. Um, but those are my theories. So let me know what you think. Anyway, that is everything I had to check in with you about for my 2020 makeup rehab goals. One of which was met, three of which were not. But 2020 who could have planned for it I feel like actually that it's quite good in a way that I feel as relaxed as I do about the fact I didn't meet the goals like I'm not totally relaxed like I'm disappointed so I don't I don't mean to underplay that but I feel very much like okay we informed 2021 with what happened in 2020 but as I feel like in the past I would have been like well I failed that's it I feel no point in continuing if you can't get it right the first time just just don't ever do it again kind of thing like that was very much my attitude and that I still get like that with certain things and there are things that I sometimes care so deeply about that I almost like would rather like not do them than do them and have them done imperfectly like and I think that informs part of the ways that I want things even outside of being in a bad headspace and shopping for the wrong reasons to get you know the, that dopamine dose I think in terms of the way that I covet things it's linked to that sort of slightly perfectionist streak in me and I feel like the fact I can be quite relaxed about the fact that 2020 didn't plan out in terms of these plans in terms of my makeup rehab plans the way that I had envisioned and it's not you know sort of overwhelming me or making me want to give up I feel really good about that I feel like that's just that's progress in myself that I don't maybe quite know how to articulate but I hope it makes sense what I've said that is everything for this video thank you very much for watching it I hope it was a little bit more engaging than last week's thank you so much to those of you who watched it um yeah it was a lot of numbers even when I was editing it I was a bit like is there a point in putting this video up because it's so I used up this this was the goal d -d -d -d. like so not engaging um so I hope this has been a little bit more enjoyable thank you very much for watching this one and I will see you in my next video which will be my 2020 money diary so wrapping up the no buy budget year as a whole I will see you in that one bye